Hey everybody, it's Greg Rice here in the Bucket, Pawtucket, Rhode Island. And a storm is coming to Rhode Island, and it's not bringing rain or snow. It's bringing legislation. It's bringing the almighty legislation. There is going to be some reckoning for the Airbnb community. And the Airbnb community has been largely unmonitored, unregulated, and uninterrupted you can say, but it is becoming a business to reckon with and states and cities and towns across Rhode Island are recognizing that. So what does that mean? It means that the government is coming to moderate, not take control, but to moderate and keep things in line, keep a boundary, create rules, create regulations, all of the other things that us in the business community are dealing with, whether you own rental property, whether you have a restaurant, whether you provide cosmetic services, whatever you're doing, you're following regulations. And Airbnb, VRBO owners, they have been skirting by that and riding high on the hog. And personally, I can't wait for some restriction because it has been the wild west and these properties are cash cows most of the time and i hate the word the term cash cow but it has been because people are renting they're getting really good money for a really short amount of time and they're repeating that they're hitting that boom two three four hundred dollars a night cleaning fees this fee that fee they're making a lot of money very quickly when us in the long game here, landlords, we're making, who knows? Say, for example, if you have a $1,500 rent, we're making $50 a day. That's what we make. Long, slow distance. And these property owners are doing it like that. So, in any event, I'm happy that there is legislation a brewing. And there was a great article I'll put it up here in the PBN by Christopher Allen. It was a very succinct article, too, which I love. And um, essentially, a legislative commission chaired by Lauren Carson from Newport, and Newport's been at the crux of this problem, has started meeting to review the status on short-term rentals. And she and the committee are expected to make recommendations by March of 2024, on what to do, how to do it, in essence, okay? So it's been a firestorm because, like I said, there's no regulation. People are renting to whoever, whenever, parties are happening, crime is happening, it's disrupting normal neighborhood flows, zoning ordinances have been tested and pushed to their limits. So it's time that we first define what is a short-term rental. And that's what this article calls for. We need a definition. We need a definition that we can work off of in order to continue that growth and create a foundation and a boundary that's fair not only for the community, right? The business community, the government, the neighborhood, but also it makes sense for these property owners and for their guests because they're not bad. This is not a bad situation. It's just in need of some boundaries. So we need to make sure that that definition can apply across the board equally and fairly and that everybody agrees to what that definition is. Interesting statistic here. Airbnb said in 2022, it remitted a record $6 million in tax revenue to the state. So that means from all the bookings that have happened, all those bookings have been charged tax, okay, to those property owners. And in turn, Airbnb has paid said tax to the state. And $6 million, that's a lot. Um, I would say, I don't know, that means that they probably grossed between 30 and $40 million in uh, in sales, right, to send over that kind of tax. So it proves the point that it's truly a business that many people are doing a very good job at or are creating their entire business model around. So instead of buying traditional rental properties like I do, 
they're buying nicer properties and doing that in lieu of what we do. So it, it proves just in the tax revenue alone that it's a serious business model. Now, another interesting statistic here is that in Newport, for example, 547 short-term rental property owners are registered with the state. Only 364 have registered with the city, however. But on November 8th, a presentation to this commission that I speak of showed just under 5,000 registrations according to the Rhode Island DVR. So that showed all 39 municipalities here in Rhode Island have Airbnb currently or VRBO. But the majority of them are concentrated within 12 cities. What can you do about it? How do you approach it? That's what this committee is tasked with doing. And what I feel is that Airbnb specifically needs to have zoning ordinances around it that make sense. Because when I want to develop a property, for example, like I did the church in Woonsocket, I needed to present to the local zoning board. And I needed to say, this is what I'm going to do. These are the types of people that are going to live here. These are what the rents are going to be. Do you allow this? And ultimately, the city said, yes, this makes sense. Makes sense in this community. We're not going to have parking issues. We're not going to have population issues. We're not going to have a drain on public services, et cetera, et cetera. It made sense. So what's going to be interesting here is that wherever there's an Airbnb, the local zoning is going to have to allow that and call for that. But what happens if it's in an area that doesn't call for that or doesn't allow that? Essentially, though, wherever there's a residence, and these are all residents that are being rented out on a short-term basis, it shouldn't make too much of an issue because these are already properties that exist. It's not like we're building properties from scratch. But are they in neighborhoods that are traditionally used for rental property? Most likely, no. And that's a lot of the problem in Newport. Neighbors are saying, I got these parties, I got these bachelorettes, I got these bachelor parties, I got fighting in the street, I got 30 cars parked, I hear boom, boom, boom all night from the music. That's going to be the problem is the quality of life. How do you manage the quality of life? And how do you do so efficiently? So I think that that's going to be the biggest issue is trying to create some type of policy that applies statewide but will make sense the same way in Burraville as it makes sense in Newport. So I applaud this commission. I applaud Lauren Carson for being at the helm of this situation. I can opine on it all day long, but ultimately this is a very important topic, but it's also very complicated. It's extremely complicated, and it essentially came out of nowhere in the scope of doing business and society. I mean, within the last five years, this has, boom, popped on the scene. The same way that Uber came up. But Uber and Lyft and rideshare services were able to be safely and reasonably integrated into our daily lives. And I feel that this is the same. This should be able to be integrated fairly and still make sense for these business owners. Okay, we can't put people out of business. We just have to find a way to integrate it. And you look at what are the alternatives for people. They want to stay at hotels? No, hotels are, they've lost their luster. They're very plain Jane. They're very boring. They're very outdated a lot of times. And uh, people don't want that. They want the experience. They want to be immersed in the community. They want to go to Newport for the wedding, stay at an Airbnb, walk down to the main street. They want to be a part of that. And we shouldn't be blinding them or making that more difficult for the sake of this is how we've always done it. So again, great, great topic here. It's going to require some serious, serious elbow grease and some brain power, but they will get there. So again, Airbnb needs to be integrated and uh, here today opining on that. Once again, Greg Rice here in the bucket, your property and your short-term rental managed.